Hello, everyone. This is NWS Columbia meteorologist Dan Miller, and I want to welcome you to Calculating the Odds, a video series on probabilistic weather forecasting. The goal of these videos is to help you, the end user, better understand some of the probabilistic products issued by the National Weather Service so that you can make more informed decisions about the weather. The weather impacts nearly every aspect of our daily lives, from disaster preparedness to deciding what to wear when we leave home for the day. So it's important to understand the different aspects of our forecasts, including the differences between a deterministic forecast and a probabilistic forecast. As they say, it takes a village to forecast the weather, so we plan to release new videos in the series every one to two months featuring a different member of the NWS Columbia team. This video will go over some of the basic definitions to prepare you for our more advanced topics. Our next video will discuss one of the better known forecast parameters we release, the probability of precipitation, or POP for short, in addition to applying probabilities to one of our commonly used advisories. With that out of the way, let's get started on the foundations of probabilistic forecasting. So what is probabilistic forecasting, and how does it differ from deterministic forecasting? Let's start with deterministic forecasting. The deterministic forecast calculates a singular value for a selected location. For example, you can view the forecast highs and lows on weather.gov through our point-and-click forecasts. While this is our best guess at the temperature on a given day, what happens in reality is often higher or lower than the given value, with accuracy often decreasing the further in time you go. While our point-and-click forecasts provide a quick overview of what we think the weather will be, it is best to focus less on the singular numbers beyond the day 1 to 3 period, and more on the probabilistic forecast. In this example, the deterministic forecast shows a low temperature of 31 degrees in Colombia, while the probabilistic forecast indicates a 75% chance of temperatures at or below freezing on Tuesday night. This lets the user know that while there is relatively high probability of seeing sub-freezing temperatures, it is not a guarantee that this will occur. The various computer models we use don't always agree on how the weather will change over time, providing our forecasters with a myriad of possible future outcomes. Our probabilistic forecasts take the variety of solutions into account, providing our end users an overview of these outcomes in the form of probabilities that a certain event may occur. In some cases, we may also mention the range of possible outcomes. Going back to temperatures, a deterministic low temperature value of 36 degrees may not take into account model guidance that shows the temperatures falling below freezing, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, an important consideration for our users that have outdoor plants and animals. If we see the potential for sub-freezing temperatures, we may mention that there is a low or 30% chance that temperatures will fall below freezing and or provide a range of values, depending on the situation. This allows you to better plan ahead and take action if you need to. Before taking a look at a few examples, here are a few statistical terms that we need to go over. Let's say we are looking at a snowfall forecast. In this example, values range from a half inch to nearly a foot of snow, quite a large range. The mean of these, 6.2 inches, is a simple average of the various solutions. The median, 8 inches, is the value at the midpoint of the ensemble solutions and may be a better indicator of the most likely outcome, depending on how the solutions are skewed. The maximum minimum values are helpful because they show you the entire list of potential outcomes, though in this example this may not be helpful. The 10th percentile, 1 inch, is a reasonable best case scenario and can be used as your bottom line so that you are prepared for at least that much occurring. In this example, there is a 90% chance that at least one inch of snow will fall and only a 10% chance that less than an inch will accumulate. The 90th percentile, 10.6 inches, is a reasonable worst case scenario and can help you prepare for the more extreme possibility. In this example, there is only a 10% chance that more than 10.6 inches of snow will fall and a 90% chance of less than that amount. Here is a look at the forecast low temperatures from 100 models. Take a moment to see if you can calculate the following. The mean, the median, the range of potential low temperatures, the probability that the low will be at or below freezing, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In this example, the mean is 33.58 degrees and the median is 34 degrees. 
This means that barring any known model bias or local knowledge, our forecaster may forecast a deterministic low temperature of 34. The range of potential outcomes goes from 29 to 37. Of the 100 forecasts, only 26 have a value at or below freezing. So the probability of low temperatures at or below freezing is 26%. If this were the growing season, a forecaster would be unlikely to issue a freeze product, but would likely mention a low 20 to 30 percent chance of sub-freezing temperatures. Mention temperatures ranging from the upper 20s to mid 30s, or both. That will wrap things up for this episode of Calculating the Odds. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section, and we will go over them in the next video of the series. Expect the next topic to debut on our YouTube channel in the next few weeks. If you haven't already, make sure to follow NWS Columbia on YouTube and enable notifications so you are among the first to see our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'm NWS Columbia meteorologist Dan Miller, signing off until next time.